I think the most important thing about this project is the huge responsibility of the team putting the project together. Um, there can hardly be a city in the world that has this opportunity, and while it's a great opportunity, there's a great responsibility for, the, for everyone involved. Um, we have the opportunity here to create something new, something innovative, something highly sustainable, something inventive, something that will re effectively lead to the, 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 the rebirth of the, of the city, um, something that will um, have resonance with, with the city as, as a historical centre. But most importantly, something that will, will last for the next 100, 150 years, 200 years, and will be a model. And I think the most important thing I feel is that, that, that it needs to be a totally exemplary project and, and that can, can set new standards in terms of all of those elements. One of the key traps that really needs to be avoided in the beginnings of creating this master plan is that on one level what you have is a lot of practical and pragmatic information. So what's quite easy to do is just create a master plan. But it's easy to create a master plan with no vision. And the city is a great city that used to have fantastic civic character and we need to recreate that again. On the other hand, if you go to the other extreme, you can create something that's so visionary that it's totally undeliverable. Our firm has a track record, as do Warren and Marnie, of working with deliverable master plans that do get built and do get recreated. And to me, that is the key. So it's a balance between the vision and the pragmatics and then out of that, what we'll, we will get is additional value and the idea of the rebirth of the city. The way one starts to create a master plan is to create different blocks and different messing diagrams. These aren't like Lego blocks. These, are, these have floor plates in, they have areas in, they, they have allowances for things like lifts and staircases. And what they do is they allow people to add up the area, work out how much the buildings it cost in a very accurate way and then work out whether the building is affordable, so whether the appraisals work. They also test things like heights, which will be very important to the planners, and, how, and, 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 what, and things like basements and how the ground floors work. So I think in a way they're the beginnings of putting the building blocks together to rebuild the city. The key thing about them is they allow um, different landowners to de-risk the planning process and the, and, and the engagement process. So if you like, they can, they can lead to fast-track planning permissions and, and buildings that um, work financially. What would then happen? Other architects would be given these blocks with a list of parameters set out to them. Now those parameters might be about height, about envelope, a little bit about shape, um, it might be about frontages, might be about cornice lines, about how the streetscape should work, about how landscape works, but things like, and there might be some guidance on materials, appropriate elevational materials, but effectively, they're really guidelines which then each individual architect can interpret so that we're still going to get a city that will feel like lots of different people have designed it. It's important that it doesn't just feel like a, sh a giant shopping centre which is designed by an individual. It's got to have um, character and individuality. So we have to get um, eccentric buildings, we have to get formal buildings, we have to have symmetrical buildings, we have to have buildings that might be slightly classical, we have to have buildings that are very modern and different. In London we're obviously hosting the Olympic Games next year and um, we were part of the team who developed the master plan for the Athletes Village. I think it's fair to say the London Games are the first games where the legacy is important, i.e. what happens after the Games is really important because the Games of course are only on for six weeks in total. Um, with the, the Athletes Village Master Plan, what we did was develop um, massing envelopes, but they had to meet the standards of commercial developers. So we developed those plans in, um, in diagrammatic manner, but set out heights, set out some design guidance, and then we helped choose different architects for every single building. So there, I think there are over 30 architects that then were choreographed and then went along by themselves without any help from us to carry on developing the buildings. I see it in a very similar manner here, that we would be part of the team that would set the parameters, and then individual landowners could choose from a pool of architects or could choose their own architect, but they would have something to work with. So if you like, their projects would be de-risked because the sort of appraisals and heights and massing, there would already be good guidelines for those elements, which I think would be very important. I think in this um, initial stage of the project, it would be really important to try and examine what the supply chain is within Christchurch itself and the surrounding areas. I'd suggest that some form of database is built up of local businesses that can help 
and that these businesses um, can, in a way, start to create a lexicon of materials that could be avail available to the local business community and the architects and engineers who are helping to design this. I think one of the critical things here is about future-proofing the project, and there's two aspects to this. There's future-proofing the buildings themselves, making sure that they're flexible. Um, as we all know, the way, ways of working and shopping and living are all changing constantly. I think particularly, um, particularly I think the world of work and, and the world of retail. I think both those um, are, are, are hard to call in the future, but are changing. So therefore the buildings that we create there need to be totally flexible to allow new ways of doing those, both those, those t types of things. I think the second thing is, and this gets back to the public realm, that creating the flexibility in the public realm that will allow different opportunities over time. Because one of the most important things to recognise here is that this project will, will be built over several years, maybe 10, maybe 20 years. It's always going to be important to, to allow for that flexibility. And in that period, things will change as well. So there will be new requirements. Um, and it's important that, that a master plan doesn't become a master plan that was designed in 2012, but in 2025 is no good to anyone. So it's really important to future prim, and that's going to be about the scale of the streets, the scale of the spaces in between them, the amount of infrastructure allowed from power to make sure there's enough power to, to power larger buildings if need be, to the way traffic moves around, to the way people move around. Everyone has to feel part of this project. Um, again, in the UK, we, it's a, planning is a very, very democratic process where the, on, on major schemes like this, there would there have to be um, a huge amount of exhibitions and workshops to make sure everyone's voice is heard. It's important that everyone's voice is heard. It's also important to recognise that everyone's voice is equal. Um, but part of the workshop and exhibition process will be to find out how we engage with local stakeholders, who those representatives might be, and how we get organised by listening to those people and then help letting them help form the brief. And I think this is critical. And I think in London now, we have discovered that on major projects, these processes can go on for an awful long time. But when done well, when the project is built, everyone feels part of it. Everyone feels that they've added something to it. And in a way, if we manage to achieve that in Christchurch, I can't think of a more appropriate place for that to happen. I think the business community are going to be critical to the success of this project because in a way the, the, the ownership of land and the movement of that land is going to be critical to the rebuilding of, of the city. I'd like to think that one of the things that we can help there is by bringing absolutely state-of-the-art thinking in office design, in housing design and retail design that the team encompasses um, can, can really start to encourage those owners and developers um, to understand that their land themselves could actually have more value than it used to have. This is part of the vision, that the vision isn't just about um, bricks and mortar, it's also about something more passionate than that, because I think this is going to clearly be a very passionate project for people.